Hello friends, I'm Su. Um, it's been a while that I haven't made any videos. Um, I'm still in the Netherlands um, and I have been uh, editing um, a collection of my uh, philosophical thinking that I'm going to publish before I uh, leave the Netherlands. Um, well, actually, um, um, it's lucky that I'm I'm not a um, geopolitical um, analyst because if I am, um, my audiences would probably um, unsubscribe if I do not make any videos for a very long time. Um, but uh, my videos are uh, quite academic um, in some senses. And uh, it often takes a long time for people to digest my uh, content. And it's not directly uh, related to the reality. So uh, I assume that my audiences can tolerate that uh, it, it took a long time for me to uh, uh, update my videos. Today I'm going to talk about the nature of political parties. Um, in the modern West, uh, in liberal democracy, they have uh, uh, different political parties participating um, in the parliament, in their uh, democracy, so to speak. And in America, you have Democrats and Republicans. Um, and in Europe, they have more um, parties within a country. Uh, in the Netherlands, for example, uh, they have many parties. They have uh, Partij voor Vrijheid, and they have Fifi Day, they have BBB, it's a party for the uh, for, for, for the farmers actually. Uh, they have Day uh, and Sister, they have a Partij for the Dieren, the, the party for the animals, um, which is very weird. Um, <laughs> they have many other uh, parties actually. Um, the West believes that uh, the party uh, politics is a very good thing. You have many different parties and every party represents uh, the interest of certain group um, and they believe this is very fair, uh, this is very good, this is a sign of civilization, this is a justified system that uh, every interest group can participate um, in negotiating um, the politics. But political parties uh, in Chinese history, in Chinese political history, is not something new. It's been there for uh, 2,000 years, actually. Um, it's a very bad thing, actually, because every time in Chinese history when political parties started to form, it means the dynasty was near death. So it's very typical that when typically two parties started to form within the palace, um, after while well, after decades of years, um, this dynasty collapsed. Um, there were four typical um, ancient Chinese dynasties uh, in history: Han, Tang, Song. Ming, and in the late stages of all these four dynasties, without exception, the political parties started to form, and the dynasty died after that. So, in Chinese history, it was almost a, a common sense, actually, um, that as long as political parties start to fall, start to rise, it means the cancer, it means the late stages of cancer for the dynasty. You're going to die soon. So it always makes me laughing uh, when I see the West people are so proud of their political parties, they see it as a sign of civilization or Western civilization. Say, like, look, 
how great we are. We have different political parties, and they can all participate in the politics. How great we are. You are savages. You must learn from us because you don't understand civilization. But the, <laughs> but I always feel like these people are proud of their cancers. It feels like, look, look, we have cancers. You don't have cancer. We have cancers. How cool we are. Um, but why are political parties so bad for politics? Because political parties are interest groups. Every party is a different interest group. When politics is in its noble form, um, it's based on honor, responsibility, sense of justice, all these noble great things. Um, but when politics starts to be based on interest, it means politics is fundamentally corrupted. Well, this is something um, that China probably, uh, ancient China would probably agree with uh, the ancient Greek philosopher Socrates because um, Socrates also portrayed um, politics in its noble form um, as monarchy um, and aristocracy. And actually, in his uh, Republic, um, uh, in the Republic, um, he shows how the um, how a state collapse uh, from um, uh, sorry not collapse but get corrupted from um, monarchy aristocracy to oligarchy to uh, democracy and eventually to tyranny um, and in the beginning in the in the first uh, stages it. The politics was based on an owner and later is based on interest and it goes worse and worse goes down and eventually um, tyranny um, party in chinese uh, is peng dang, uh, which literally means friends party friends party um, so it's a party of uh, friends so to speak and uh, some people would argue that uh, it's different. It's different from modern political parties um, because the Friends Party are not parties. They uh, are not modern political parties. They don't have um, a formal establishment of a party. They don't have um, a manifesto. They don't have a formal president of the party. They don't have the uh, modern structure a formal structure of uh, how a uh, Western political party uh, works. Um, so some scholars would like to argue that Peng um, should be translated more um, accurately into fractions. Um, it's political fractions. It's not a um, political party in the uh, modern Western sense. Um, but if you look at the reality, if you look at the historical circumstances and the things that were actually going on, um, um, you can see um, the difference is very superficial, is very superficial. It's only the titles, it's only the names, but how the thing actually works is, is exactly the same. The, the both Chinese Peng uh, Dao and modern West political parties um, represent different um, group interests. In the late stage of Han Dynasty, of Dong Han Dynasty actually, uh, there was uh, a political struggle between two parties which was historically called Dang Gu Zhi Huo. Um, it was uh, a struggle between a party of eunuchs in the pillar, uh, in the pillars, and um, a party of a combination of um, ministers and the relatives of the king at the time, and this happened 
Uh, firstly, because the eunuchs um, in the palace, they formed an interest group and they controlled many things, uh, the major interest benefits in the country, and they did many bad things and uh, it created uh, disasters for Chinese people, make people suffer, and uh, they benefit uh, everything. They get all the interest and they even controlled the king. They even controlled the king. The, the king was blinded by by their vicious, by the uh, poisoned, poisonous words um, from these uh, eunuch groups. And uh, the ministers and relatives of the king were not satisfied, were very angry with uh, what's happening in the palace. And they decided to form a group um, to fight against um, the eunuchs groups, um, which was historically Dang Gu Zhi Huo. Um, in the late stage of Tang Dynasty, there was also a two-party struggle, um, which was called Niu Li Dang Zheng, uh, which literally means um, the struggle between party Niu and party Li. Both Niu and Li uh, were the surnames of the uh, leaders of two different interest groups. Um, and uh, Niu represents uh, the interest of the uh, lately um, um, inaugurated officials, uh, inaugurated ministers in China, which just uh, passed the Ch uh, Chinese national exam to um, enter the palace. And uh, Li represents a group of ministers and officials um, and which were rooted in Shandong province but have been in the palace being officials and ministers for many generations. It's like a very mature um, old um, power group. And Tang Dynasty was already falling into serious problems at the time. Um, and it started to form an oligarchs um, and the king's power was already weakened. Um, and the king wanted to make reform to uh, weaken the oligarchs and to redistribute wealth to um, help people. Um, but it was very difficult anyway. And there were different interest groups, um, and some of them um, still try to um, defend uh, the regional oligarchs, and some some of them want to um, make radical reforms to uh, weaken the oligarchs, uh, to um, empower the king, and some of them just represent uh, different oligarchs and fight each other. So it was quite chaotic, even when it was uh, roughly divided into um, Neil and Li, two parties. The actual struggle was uh, uh, very complicated, actually. It, it, it becomes, it eventually becomes um, two pure interest groups. And it's, it, it's not a, a, a group, group of groups of differences only based on faith or belief, uh, owner stuff. No, it's just interest. And uh, in the late stage of Song Dynasty, again, something similar happened. Um, the country was falling into social inequality already. Uh, the riches were super rich and the poor were very poor. And there were many oligarchs, um, and uh, they were very wealthy, and they don't care about people. Um, and the ministers found it necessary to make political reforms at the time. Um, and there was a famous politician whose name was uh, Wang Anshi. Uh, he made a reform. He finally convinced the king to make a reform to to make a. Um, probably what I should call um, as a socialist reform in China. Um, and the king was convinced by him and, uh, and just did the reform. But the problem was 
his reform was too radical, was too radical, and was too in a hurry. His intention was good, but it it practically results in disasters. Actually, it it it, it feels like the the communism. It feels like communism、um, is a good idea, but in practice, the, 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 it doesn't work well.、Uh, so、something like that. So there were people who were against Wang Anshi's reform, even from the beginning. Not because that reform hurts their interest, but because、uh, they believe in it will practically go wrong. It will not work as、um, he thinks it would work.、Um, and at the time, the two parties was labeled as、uh, the new party and the old party. The new party is a party that is pro reform, pro Wang Anshi's reform, and the old party is those who are against it,、um, those who believe that this so radical reform will result in practical disasters and will not go,、um, will not work as、um, the person thinks it would work.、Um, So this time the struggle was a little bit different from the usual、um, interest group fight in the beginning.、Um, it it was a fight between two parties、um, based on、um, quite noble purpose.、Uh, both of them want to、um, do good things to country,、um, want to make it better for people, but they just had different opinions on.、Um, How the reform should go, and how radical, how fast it should go,、um, and also after this reform, because it hurts some interest groups, and, and and these people start to fight against the reform,、um, then it becomes interest group fights. It becomes a struggle, a fights between、uh, different interest groups.、Um, then it causes. Uh, then caused more and more problems and disasters, struggles within the country, within China, um, and uh, uh, not long after, uh, China was um, completely conquered by the northern barbarians, by、uh, Jing, and then by the Mongolians. In the late stage of Ming Dynasty,、uh, there was again a two-party struggle.、Uh, And one party was called、uh, Dong Lingdao. It、uh, was a group of uh, uh, Confucian intellectuals、um, in southern China, actually,、um, and they were fighting against uh, uh, a party called Yan Dao. And Yan Dao means the castrated <laughs> means the castrated party. They were、uh, a group of eunuchs in their、um, palace,、uh, so it was comparable to.、Um, Late stage of Han Dynasty,、uh, in which the political power was controlled by、uh, the castrated eunuchs, um, um, but the situation in Ming Dynasty was kind of more complicated than、uh, the things before in other Chinese dynasties, because the Ming Dynasty, the founding king, did one thing that、uh, kind of subverted the Chinese monarchy, because Chinese monarchy、um, had been、um, a king, prime minister. It it, it was a two leader system. It was a two leader system.、Um, the ethical moral leader, the king, is different from the political、uh, governmental leader, the prime minister. But what the founding king、um, of Ming Dynasty did was to cancel the. Prime Minister. He said, "Oh well, we don't need Prime Minister. I'm smart. I'm powerful. I'm intelligent enough. I can do all the job. I don't need the Prime Minister to、uh, manage the political affair. I, I just do all the jobs." <laughs> <laughs> But the problem was,、um, this founding king of Ming Dynasty、uh, was right in some sense. He was intelligent and powerful and competent man. But how about 
the people after him? How about his sons and grandsons? Can he guarantee that his sons, his next generations,、uh, will be as intelligent as him? And and the history shows that no, no, they were not. They were not. They need prime minister actually, but、um, because the political system were、uh, was already、um, having the prime minister as a position cancelled,、uh, the later kings、um, just didn't want to bother anymore. They they, they didn't think of a, a reestablish the prime minister position or something. They just keep the thing as it is. And what、uh, made the situation worse was. Uh, uh, in the late stages of, of in the late stages of Ming Dynasty,、um, the kings were very、um, disconcerned with the politics. Very disconcerned with the politics. They were not interested in the politics at all. They were interested in Taoism、uh, um, and in、uh, meditation. Yeah. Abstract philosophy um, uh, in doing a spiritual meditation、uh, in his room every day, and do not bother、uh, about politics. So, so there was a big gap there. You know, polit politics needs someone to bother. So,、uh, King didn't bother, and also there was no prime minister. Then who would bother them? The answer was the eunuchs. The eunuchs groups. Um, dealt with the political affairs, and then the eunuchs formed an interest groups,、um, and 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 they they did everything. They did all the political activities just to benefit、uh, themselves. They did not、um, care too much about the Chinese people anymore.、Um, so the rise of Dong Lingdang of The Confucian group, the of the Confucian group, Dongling, was a group of Confucian intellectuals、um, who become ministers、um, in the palace, trying to fight against、uh, these eunuch groups,、um, and they were successful in many cases. Actually, they brought down many、um, very bad asses from the.、Um, Very powerful eunuch leaders,、um, but it didn't change、um, the whole situation. the The whole situation was already getting very bad because、um, the shit doesn't happen in one day. You have the、um, eunuch groups、uh, be in charge of、uh, Chinese politics for.、Um, Decades of years and even hundred years,、um, and it, it's because the cor- politics was already very corrupted, and 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 the social problems、um, were more than even the intelligent man can handle.、Um, so from what I said, you can actually see、um, there are two situations、um, in which two parties start to form. In politics, one is、um, different interest groups start to form,、um, and the other was a big crisis already happened in China. There was big crisis. There was a very difficult uh, immediate um, uh, political problems to handle, and、uh, the king must make a reform, and and there were、um, people who.、Um, Want to make reform in this way, and there were people who want to make reform in that way,、um, and they fight each other. But the common background for both situations was that the oligarchs become very powerful, become very rich, become very large, and、uh, start to overpower the king. And this is the common background. So、uh, the parties start to shape, and the party struggle start to take place in either、um, different oligarchs start to fight each other.
uh, for their own interest. Or the king has to deal with the overpowering oligarchs at the time. Um, as I discussed before in my previous videos, that Chinese monarchy is superior in the sense of that um, the monarchy represents um, people's interest um, to fight against oligarchs. So once this monarchy fails to fight against oligarchs, it means uh, this dynasty is ready to die, is near end. Um, in the uh, in the prosperous stage, in the rising stages of a dynasty, and typically in the first 100 um, or 150 years or 200 years of, of a Chinese dynasty, you don't see uh, the party struggle at all. You don't see parties at all. You see individual ministers have different opinions um, on different stuff, and they uh, uh, there was a very nice, nice atmosphere in which Everyone discuss with with each other and with the king to determine um, and what to do with the political affairs. They, they never had big fight and they never um, form interest group or uh, or or make a, a kind of um, two sides system. Either you side with this or you side with that. Um, no, this doesn't happen in good times. If it is like the West, in which you have to be uh, either left wing or right wing, you have to uh, side with uh, either uh, a Republican Party or Democratic Party. Uh, then it means the politics is already corrupted uh, from its roots. It's so corrupted. It's uh, irremediable. Um, it's near end. Um, and some people may ask me uh, that uh, if you say the Chinese political system is so, so great, is superior, then why you also fall into these problems uh, in the late stages of a dynasty, um, if your system is good. Um, and my answer is, um, any dynasty dies. Every dynasty dies. There's no exception. If a dynasty can maintain itself uh, in the prosperous way for uh, more than 200 years, it's already a big success it's already a big success it's enough it's more than enough actually everything has a life a dynasty has a life a human being has a life if you live happily for um in a healthy way for uh, 70 years for 80 years or even more than that even 90 years i would say it's more than enough you can die you can die then nobody live forever uh, what's so great about Chinese political culture is um, as long as the dynasty is reaching the late stage of, um, um, of, of, of its life um, and politics becomes corrupted and uh, um, um, the oligarchs uh, start to monopolize everything and make uh, people suffer so much, then it's justified for the revolution to happen. It's, it's completely justified. Um, in terms of Chinese political culture, um, then it's time to down the dynasty and uh, reestablish a new one and start um, the great justice again, redistribute land, get rid of the oligarchs. Easy. That's, that's the thing. Um, the closest thing in the West that can be compared um, to uh, the ancient Chinese revolutions, to the Chinese foundation of new dynasties, is the Paris Commune, is the communist revolution um, in the West, actually. Um, it's very hard to believe the West is still struggling with this very basic thing, with this very basic um, political progress. To establish a monarchy that represents people fighting against oligarchs, they are still uh, struggling with it. But in China, even more than two thousand years ago, they already succeeded. They are this. They already succeeded. Um, they succeeded again and again. Every uh, three hundred years, um, 
or more or less. Um, but in the West, they failed again and again and again and never succeeded. Um, okay, guys, I think I just uh, uh, stop here for today. I still have uh, some stuff in my mind that I want to comment about the West and uh, the comparison between the West and the East but uh, it's, it's kind of too offensive and it's better to save these words um, because I, I don't want to uh, attract too much hatred for my, for my video so I better save it uh, and probably say it uh, in some other situations um, Okay guys, uh, th thanks very much for watching and hope to see you next time. Uh, bye.